Thank you, uh, Jamile, for the days of Elijah, uh, Elijah and Kelsey, for uh, God will take care of us. I wish all of you could be here today, everyone that's ever been in this building, because we're missing out a lot of fun. And that fun is the music. The music gets us going. The music brings us that energy that lifts us up. And it also helps us go to that heart space. So I want to say thank you to everyone that is here, everyone that's tuning in to listen to this. Thank you so very much. So we've had the music, so it's been a little difficult to Zoom and to uh, uh, record and then have to take the music out sometimes. So we're trying to do what we need to do. Um, and hopefully you can go on your uh, YouTube to hear those two beautiful songs, The Days of Elijah and also um, the, uh, that which uh, Kelsey played for us, God Will Take Care of You. So welcome to Unity Church of Winston-Salem. And you know, I don't even have glasses up here. They're on my desk along with my mask, I do believe. But I will ask the good Lord to work with me and through me and give me the eyes to see as we just take a moment and close our eyes. Because the daily word is just beautiful this morning. It's right where we are. It's time to begin to imagine, folks. To imagine a world that is different from what it is right now. To imagine a world that is being transformed by peace and by love. World peace begins within our mind and within our heart. Closing our eyes, let us just breathe deeply. Let us envision every person bringing forth the love and the peace of God. Begin to see all the world and all its people surrounded by a healing light, a light that transforms strife, anger, and division. A light that transforms all that into reconciliation, peace, and unity. As we hold this vision, begin to see the entire world aglow with radiance. Harmony and cooperation heal the world's wounds and encourage love to flower in each person's heart. Let us carry this vision throughout our day Divine love expressing as you, in you, through you. It sees only oneness. And regardless of the appearances of difference, the oneness in all things. Divine wisdom and understanding illumines our thoughts at this point. And it inspires our words. It guides us to act in ways that bring peace to our world. In Matthew 5, 9, we read, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God, our loving creator. We come to you rejoicing in this day, rejoicing in knowing that we are the children of God. And that we are seen as your, your children as we began to uh, express those attributes of the Father, Mother, God. That from which we came from, the source of all being that is within us, around us, and through us. Your Holy Spirit that dwells within, longing to be seen in the outer world. For as it comes forth through individual lives, just as it did in Jesus the Christ, we saw that magnificent glow of love, of peace, of compassion, of harmony and balance. May we be those examples in this day and this time that we too may express that divine light and love of who we are, that we will be seen and known, all of us, as the divine children of God. 
Guide and guide us in all that's said and done. May my ego self be set aside, that the true self may speak. And may our hearts open up to receive the vibrations of love and harmony and peace that is being manifest right here, right now in this room, right here, right now in the hearts of the listeners, filling this room, filling their homes, filling the beingness of those that are in the stillness. May they feel and experience the presence of God, the presence of peace, the presence of joy, the connection with you, dear God, goes beyond all understanding. For this, I give thanks. Amen. Amen. In the song that Jamile was singing, it has lots and lots of, especially Old Testament um, verses. These are the days of Elijah, the return of the restoration of all things. And uh, the time of David, the time of righteousness, the time of peace, everything being restored back. But it goes on to say, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud, showing up as the morning sun, brighter than the sun. You know, when I began to listen to that, it's got a good beat and it gets my energy going. And I know that there's truth in every verse that's being sung. But you know, we've all heard the Bible. We all read the verses. We all know what's in it. We know the stories. And we've been doing this for such a long, long time. All of us, no matter what denomination you are, whatever holy rites that you have been studying for many, many years, you know what it says. But do you know what it says? We know the words, but we know the truth behind the words. There's a truth behind all words that at a deeper level, spirit is speaking to us. And so you can throw this out. What I say, I'm not trying to get anybody to believe anything differently than what you already believe. But I recognize that we as um, Protestant religions, we've come from this background of being taught as a little girl the rules you have to keep, the rules you have to do, the way you have to act, or you're not going to this place called heaven. And if you do anything less than what I tell you to do, you're going to this place called hell. Well, I tell you, we make our own heaven and hell here on earth, folks, and you know what I mean. When you're in stress, you're in fear, you're in anxiety, Most, a lot of people are living in hell right now because of the inability to be at peace, the inability to be in harmony, the inability to be into oneness. And this, I think God's given us a great, great gift. He's given us a gift of the time to be alone. The time to be alone so we can get to know the truth of who we are as children of God. Be still and know. And things are coming up for us that we can begin to look in the stillness or while we're washing dishes or doing the gardening. Watch the thoughts that come through your mind. What kind of thoughts are they? Are they the highest and best for yourself and others? Are they thoughts of the Most High God or children of God that would think these thoughts? I'm not saying this for condemnation or anything. We're coming to a place that we're being called to wake up. We're being called to look at what's inside of us. And you are the judge. No one else outside of you is the judge. You begin to see if you are in the place of a higher way of being. Because ever since we were little children, we have known from a heart level or either a gut level, from very small children, what's right and what's wrong. What's harmful to us or somebody else or what helps us to 
rise to that feeling of feeling good and feeling at peace and feeling comfortable with our own self. Can you feel what I'm saying? So no person outside of you need ever tell you what to think or what to feel or what to believe and what not to believe. But it's for us to start going deep inside to say, whom do I serve? What do I serve? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If I say that, what am I saying? It's for all that I am, all my thoughts, we will serve a higher purpose. I'm even either serving the divine of my being, or I am serving the things of the world. We live in duality, and we're being called to harmony and balance. To walk that middle road, that road of the heart, that road of peace, that road of love, that will let me look to the left and look to the right and say, there they are, the left and the right. But what you choose to think and feel, I have no right to judge you. Now I'm speaking for myself. I have no right to tell you what to believe. Because we're in a time of great transition. And we are the ones that help create this division. And only humanity can bring it back into balance. But we're in a time of transition on oh, many, many, many different levels. We're being called to recognize who we are. And Deb played us a a video that I just kind of stumble on to this week, and I don't, I believe there's no accidents. But it was a young man singing, I am the light. Back in 87, I was in Valley Cruces with a group of people. And about the time I started to finish, I found myself singing a song, and I'm not a person that sings in public, only in the shower at home by myself, is where I prefer. And in that, the title seemed to be, I am the light. And what I was singing was, I'm the stars in the heaven, I'm the birds in the tree, I'm the air you're breathing, I'm you, I am me. I'm all things, was the gist of it. And I felt it was coming from that I am presence of the God within me. It was saying, I'm all things. But then yesterday when I heard it, it sounded like all the things that I've been believing and it, it's been coming forth from my beingness ever since that day when I first sang that song. And if you'll go on YouTube and click it, it's I am light. I am not the color of my hair. I'm not the color of my eyes. I'm not the color of my skin. But I am light. I am light. I'm not that, that those things, mistakes my family made. I'm not the broken pieces within me. I'm not the thoughts or the voices in my head. I am light. I am light. It's so beautiful to me to hear that rhythm and that truth coming forth in this day and this time. I would love to play that for everybody, and I'd like for that to be a number one hit in the world because it goes on to say that my soul is light, and I'm recognizing more and more every day that we are not the human beings. We are not the flesh. We are not the bone. We are not the form. We are truly the soul of life itself, divinity itself, and it's longing to make its, its voice be known, its presence be known. When in that song, when I come in the clouds, I'm coming, God's coming in the clouds of glory, that place that is higher, higher than our own thoughts. It's the universal consciousness, and it's coming to us like a noonday sun or brighter than the sun. It's that illumination that will light up our life, light up our joy, light up our peace and harmony, and give us wisdom and understanding. 
we all know what we've been taught. But to know is not doing. The majority of us knows what's right, but we want somebody else to do that. We don't have the time. But right now, people are going to wake up, and already are, that that connection to the divine comes through prayer and meditation, comes through that quiet time when you feel that heart began to open and you began to rise up in consciousness in a way you've never done before. And all the old stuff begins to pass away. And the new is brought before us. Spirit speaks to me so often in dreams. And years ago, I had a dream that there was this beautiful train that stopped in front of me, and I wanted to get on that train. And I knew it was a new train. It was a different train. It opened up from the side and the doors, the whole side of it opened up, and it was like bleachers inside. And I thought, this is different. And I walked over to the lady to purchase a ticket. Wherever it's going, I want to try this train out. I want to be going where these other people are going. And I knew that ticket was going to be such a great price to pay. And she said, I said what's this about? She said, you're going to a wonderful place where anything that you think of is right there for you. And she said, even on the train, when you're on the train, you just think of something, and it's going to be right there for you. You don't have anything that you'll be in need of on this train. So I asked, what was the price of the, tr uh, tr the ticket? And she said, put your baggage down. I knew I was going to travel, so I had my luggage. I thought she was going to put it, have someone come and put it on the train. I said, but what's the price of the ticket? She said, you leave it all behind. I mean, man, I shifted in that dream right then. It was like, what? She said, I, and I held on to my pocketbook. I said, I need to pay you for that, don't I? She said, no, leave it all behind if you're going to get on the train. Reluctantly, I turned loose of my wallet, my purse, with all the things that I really thought I needed. You know, my charge cards, my money, my everything. But I recognize, as I got on that train, it was telling me to get on track. Get on track with where you're intending to go, to a higher place in consciousness, a place where you leave it all behind. And even in this past week, I'm experiencing those things within me that are cutting me loose from thoughts, from feelings, from what I thought was needs or desires. It's like they're sliding over, sliding off of me. I remember when I was in the oneness in India. At one time I was standing in the energy that was so sweet and so peaceful. I felt my, my garment begin to slide off my shoulder. And I reached to pull it back up and it, you know, it was, it was on. But during that time, every once in a while, I'd feel my skirt start to fall down, and, I'd, and it wasn't. And after a while, I realized things were just slipping away from me. Things I no longer need, attitudes, beliefs. Now, I got off track. I got back into vision. I got back into judgment. I got back into gossip sometimes, you know got back into that part of I'm wrong and I'm right and you're wrong. But there's always that push saying get back on track. And so now this dream that I had is your dream too, I believe, that you want to go to that higher place. And all these things that are negative in our life has been holding us down from that which is in us, the divine to rise up to a higher space for us to realize who we are. We're only focused on this one reality out here, most of us, the duality. But do you know that spirit of who you are, the spirit of the living God of who you are, that Holy Spirit that came forth from God, that divinity, that spark of life that is within you wanting to come forth? It's above you also in all dimensions. 
And as we begin to rise up in that consciousness of knowing who we are, we are connected to the oneness of all there is. Divinity itself, with all its wisdom, there is only one. That one that is the creator, and out of the creator, all things come forth. And Jesus came forth with that message for us. He came forth telling us our relationship to the Father is the same relationship that he has with the Father. And we're just now at the place that we can receive truth of that message. We're at the place where that caterpillar, that lowly little worm that we think we are, is beginning to transform into the beautiful butterfly that goes into a higher place. It doesn't go around on the ground, slithering around, trying to devour everything its little body wants. And that's what we do. We want this and that and the other, and nothing seems to satisfy. But that that you've been hungering and thirsting for is the truth that's going to set you free. You will experience that truth. You will experience healing. You will experience peace. You will experience joy. And you've done it in this lifetime, folks. But when you do it, then you get off track and you turn loose of it. We, Jesus said, I came to bring you an abundant life, a life more abundant. Do you believe? Do you believe? Most of us don't believe. As we begin to accept that truth, our faith begins to build. Our joy begins to be overflowing. And we begin to rise up in consciousness to rest in that abundant life that Jesus came to give us. Now is the time for a new creation now is a time of what was that that Jesus was teaching us? Love and forgiveness. That's all you have to let grow inside you. When love and forgiveness, you begin to forgive yourself and love yourself. And then you find out the self of you is the self of everyone else. We're all interconnected. It's only just a breath away in consciousness to connect with that place and from this point forward I guarantee you, you're going to hear more and more of it once we move out beyond this division and strife and we begin to work out that energy in a win-win situation this but that can happen is what I'm hearing somebody think but you forget God is in control for se about two years or more every time I got up here something would come up fear not would somehow weave into the message and I thought Lord why am I always saying fear not the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want why would I fear not even though I walk through the valley of a shadow of death because it is a shadow it's a shadow of death Jesus said I come that you can have life and have life more abundantly eternal life you are not the body you are not your mind you are the living spirit of the living God. You are a soul. And the soul can never die. So we're here to remember. To remember who we are. And to serve God and to serve each other. This planet was given to us. Paradise. Has paradise changed? Has Mother Earth changed? If it's become a different creation, we are the ones that were given free will on this planet to create it like we wanted to create it. We chose power and authority over others. That's why we see the stories 
in the Bible where everything gets so wicked and then it's destroyed. The evil cannot continue to exist in a place that was rooted and grounded in the light of God. Wow. I hadn't said that before. I just heard that. Evil cannot exist in that which God gave that first vibration of life to. We are the ones that have, cre uh, have corrupted this world, and we have the power to transform this world through the divine in us. The days of Elijah. The days of Elijah, when you start looking at that, you see a man come on the scene with great power and authority. He could speak the word and it would happen. He began to slay that that seemed negative. He began to, even a child that called him a baldy or something, he, he caused the bears to come out or a bear to come out and to devour it. Now, does that sound like a person of God? What it's telling me right now when that's flashing through my mind that we woke up a long time ago and recognized we have great power as children of God. Tremendous power. And we misuse it just as he misused it. Until the time came that the whirlwind and the fire took him to a higher place. But it left on earth something of a greater dimension, Elijah, who was pure of heart and mind, seeking the will of God. May we go forth this day and this time to prepare the way of the Lord. How do I pair, prepare the way of the Lord? When John called forth, that was in the Old Testament I was looking at in Isaiah 40, Jesus came forth, and Jesus prepared that way within him. Mary actually prepared the way for him to be born and come into physical form. Then he prepared prepared the way of the divine essence in him to be seen in the world. And now John is saying, prepare you the way of the Lord as Jesus came forth. But we were to watch the, all the things that Jesus did and to go into those spaces. He wanted to be baptized right off. And that baptism represents the clearing and cleansing of our heart, soul, and mind. And then to go forth and speak the truth knowing that it is not I that is speaking the truth to humanity, but it is the Christ within that's doing the speaking. That most, if, for him, it was the majority of time. And he said the works that are being done are being done by the divine within. The Father within is doing the work. And I'm just following his instructions. This is where we too can be. Not my will, my fleshly will, my fleshly desires any longer. But my will is the will of love and peace and harmony for all humanity. And so it is. Namaste. A prayer, a blessing for our global family. We know that God is love. Love that has no end. And a power that knows no boundaries. God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world in this very moment, in this very place. Remember, remember, we can let go of any fears or any anxieties. And we can affirm that all are safe and healthy and protected right here, right now, in this place, in this moment, in this time. We bless all those who support us in maintaining a vibration and a radiance of health, harmony, peace, and joy. We express the divine life in all that we think, 
all that we say and all that we do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, and abundant love. We wrap our world in prayer today, dear God, knowing God is greater than whatever we face, greater than illness, greater than loss, greater than injustice, and so much greater than any confusion we might have. God is an everlasting flowing stream of love and wisdom pouring through each of us to anoint us here on earth with the healing harmony and wholeness that once was before the beginning. Restore that joy that we had with you, dear God, before the worlds begin. Where were we when the stars were hung and the moon put in place and the sun began to shine and the galaxies were formed? We were right there with you, God. Sparks of divinity, sparks of your life, celebrating and rejoicing the unfoldment of your presence, of your glory, and all that there is. And for this, I give thanks. For this time that we stand on planet Earth together to awaken to the truth, we are one family. We are one from one source. May that love fill each and every soul this day and bring peace and love and harmony to all who will receive it. For it's in thy name and thy presence we say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. I hope this has been a blessing for each one that's heard this today. May you be alone with yourself, alone with God, and discover that truth that will set you free. Thank you, each one that's here, and to everyone that chooses to support this ministry or any spiritual ministry. But support yourself every day in making that commitment, being disciplined to take time for God and yourself. Namaste. Blish. We're going to begin to be pulled to higher dimensions in thought by our intent. And our intent is usually to help someone else other than ourselves. But we haven't taken to heart some of the truths that Jesus taught us. And that truth is, as you give, you receive. Usually when anybody says that, that's why I don't say it so much up here in the pulpit. Because when you do, it goes to dollars and cents. You give hate-filled thoughts to someone else, guess what's going to happen? They're going to come back to you. You give bitterness to the world, what's coming back to you? Bitterness. Give love and it comes back. Um, just close your eyes and just go with this. A little lower. If you want to sing it, keep your mask on and sing. Light. Affirm, I am light. Of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Love you all. I behold the Christ in you.